Hello again, this is Roy with another video lecture for chapter number 8 where we cover long-term assets. Now let's review our accounting equation. If you remember assets, things we own, are equal to liabilities, amounts we owe, plus the stockholder or shareholder's equity. And for the past few chapters, we were covering a special classification of assets called current assets. Assets that can be converted into cash, like cash itself, or let's say accounts receivable, our last chapter, chapter 7, where we're waiting to collect the money from our customers, or chapters uh, 4 and 5, where we're selling inventory. All of these are assets that can be used up or converted into cash relatively fast, including things like supplies that we consume or prepaid costs like insurance that we use up over a short period of time. Now here in chapter 8, we have other things we own, but lasting a longer time, over a year, called long-term assets. And we're going to be dividing this up into different categories, but the main one is called property, plant, and equipment. These are physical assets, tangible assets, uh, things like building, land, equipment, furniture, computers. Yeah? And then we also have another category called intangible assets. Not as common, but uh, possibly most businesses do have intangible assets. Things like um, a license, a, a leasehold interest, patent copyright. And then a third one here in Hawaii that's not very common, kind of rare, called natural resources. Things that you extract from your ground or standing timber that you would um, then eventually convert into an inventory that you sell to customers. But in all cases, we start using up these assets. In the case of property, plant, and equipment, back in Chapter 3, we learned the using up is called depreciation. In the case of intangible assets, the using up of these assets are, is, is called amortization. And for natural resources, again, not common in Hawaii, we call this using up or really converting into sellable inventory depletion. And back in Chapter 3, we recorded depreciation by debiting the depreciation expense, okay, expense and crediting not the asset itself, remember assets are recorded with debits, but we had a related account called a contra asset. Here I'll call it accumulated depreciation. Again, instead of increase or decreasing the asset itself, we increase the contra asset credit when we debited the depreciation expense. And back in Chapter 3, we were given the amount of this adjusting entry. But here in Chapter, chapter 8, we're going to have to calculate the amount. Two or three different ways of calculating the amount. Okay, so to be a plant, properly planned equipment asset in the, in the tangible versus intangible category, it has to be used in the regular operations of your business. So if it's something you're holding for investments, then it's really not part of the property, plant, and equipment category. Okay. Again, P, P, and E, or sometimes they call it uh, fixed assets. So here's the life cycle of a, of a property planning equipment. You first buy it, you debit the asset for its cost, then as you use it up, remember we call that depreciation, you debit depreciation expense, debit expense, and you credit not the asset itself, but remember the related contra asset accumulated depreciation. So you always know the original cost, and here's how much you've used up of that asset since the time you bought it. And the difference between these two when you combine this debit and credit, it's called book value. Okay, the remaining cost to be used up. And eventually you sell or get rid of the asset, and we'll see a formula to calculate any gain or loss when you do sell it. So in the case of a land and building assets, you can see some of the cost that goes into debiting that asset. Now in the case of taxes, if this is real estate taxes, this is an ongoing annual cost that you would deduct as an expense right away. 
But if it's a conveyance tax for the transferring of, let's say, the ownership of title, then it would be part of the original cost. So in the case of machinery like this truck, it would not just be the list price or the sticker price, but all the costs to get the, um, the truck ready for use, initial use. So maybe it requires a new paint job and that would be added to the original cost or the cost of all these tires or upgrade the tires, again the initial cost. But after using the truck for years, eventually you would have to repaint the truck and that would be not added to the truck cost but a repair expense cost. Or to replace a tire, again that would be an expense. But all the costs initially to get the truck ready for use, including shipping charges, including insurance, not the annual insurance for casualty accidents, but the transportation to get the truck to your place that all would be capitalized, in other words, added to the cost of the asset. If you buy a bunch of assets for one price, like a building and land, you're not constructing yourself, but you're buying an existing building on a, a parcel of land, here for a total cost of 200000 what you have to do is allocate this cost between the two, the land and building. The reason for this is that the building cost is depreciable but the land cost is just going to sit there on your accounting records until you get rid of the property. So if you don't buy or have a record of the allocation of this too, what you can do is either hire a professional real estate appraiser or better yet, cheaper, you can use the real property tax appraised value used by the government to charge real estate taxes and you'll have a a value assigned to the building and a value assigned to the land. And even though these two amounts don't total to the original cost, you can use a ratio of these to allocate that cost, like they do here in this table. So here's the value of the land, the value of the building, and the total value of the property. And dividing these two by the total, you get these percentages that you multiply by the original cost to allocate that cost between the land that's not depreciable and the cost assigned to the building that is depreciable. Notice that the total here matches that original total cost. So what we're doing is getting costs on your balance sheet, the asset costs. Okay? Assets have future value and as you start to use up this cost, you're going to take it out of the balance sheet typically by crediting not the asset itself but the related the related accumulated depreciation and you're going to move the cost to be used up remember this is an expense here depreciation expense being debited so at the end of every period you're going to make an adjusting entry to debit depreciation expense and credit increases contra asset accumulated depreciation and not reduce the asset directly now if you want to know how much of this asset is left over, again you combine the original cost with the amount used up here to, to get that book value, the remaining costs showing up here on the balance sheet. To calculate out the depreciation, we need three different amounts. Here's the original cost that we're going to allocate over the years of usage, and here is the years this useful life. That's an estimate. Now keep in mind that the useful life is not the same as the physical life of the asset. Let's say if on a, a car, a, an automobile can last for decades physically, but for the usefulness for our company before we get rid of it, we're going to estimate it to be a shorter period of time before we have to buy or replace it with another uh, property, plant, and equipment or an automobile. And at the end of that shorter life, that useful life, Hopefully that asset has some type of value here called residual value or salvage value that we can uh, either trade it in or, or sell it to get some benefit. And there's three different calculations. One called straight line, which we'll see is the easiest of the three, versus the units production where we have to be um, getting the amount of total production we're going to get out of our our machine, or in the case of a car, let's say the total miles you're going to be driving the car over its useful life. Or here's a little bit variation of the straight line called declining balance. Okay, you need to know all these three different calculations. So the first one is called straight line, 
where the formula is to take that cost, that original cost, and subtract out the salvage value we're estimating to be, um, we're going to get at the end of this useful life. So notice our fraction here. In the numerator at the top, we have this difference called, sometimes called depreciable costs. The difference here is the total amount of depreciation we're going to record over these amount of years. So in our, our example, our cost is 50000 At the end of the five years, we estimate that the asset will be worth $5,000. So this difference of 45000 is the total depreciation we're going to record over five years. So if you divide 45 by 5, that means each annual whole year's worth of depreciation is $9,000. So if you bought this asset on January 1st and your year end is December 31st, that means you're going to record $9,000 of depreciation as an adjusting journal entry like we learned back in Chapter 3. Here's the adjusting entry. We debit depreciation expense, 9000 and we increase credit the accumulated depreciation contra asset 9000 okay so we do this every year so here is a schedule for the depreciation at the end of the first year debit depreciation expense credit accumulated depreciation keeping in mind the original cost was 50000 remember this is what's in the asset account debit um, debit balance here I'll call it equipment or machine here, debit balance. And accumulated depreciation is a credit. Okay? And the difference between these two accounts is the book value. And then we debited depreciation expense here, 9000 So here's the journal entry we just saw. Debit depreciation expense and credit accumulated depreciation. But we learned back in Chapter 304 we have closing entries, we close out expenses, so eventually this depreciation expense is zeroed out. But accumulated depreciation is not an expense, it's a contra asset that gets only bigger and bigger each year. Now the book value, the equipment cost stays the same here, it doesn't decrease like you see here, but the book value is really the difference between the equipment and the accumulated depreciation. At the end of the second year, debit depreciation expense 9000 and credit the accumulated depreciation 9000 to increase it all up to 18 again the cost is still 50 and the difference between these two accounts is the book value and book value goes down every year notice that at the end of the last year the book value the difference between the 50000 and the 45 is a book value of that salvage value we had estimated at the very start when we bought this equipment Another way of calculating depreciation is to get this rate here. So if you just divide 1 by the life here, 1 fifth comes out to 20% uh, or 0.2, and you would just multiply that depreciable cost, that's the cost of 50 minus the 5,000 salvage value, 45,000 times that percentage, and it'll give you this 9,000 for each of the year, each whole year. Okay, the second method of the three is called the units of production. Where we start off with the same cost, minusing the same salvage value here as the numerator in our fraction. But in the denominator, we don't have a life stated in years, but the life is stated in terms of the total amount we expect to get out of this equipment, this machine, this automobile. So in the case of an automobile, down here would be the total amount of miles we expect to drive that automobile over its useful life. Or maybe if it's a, a manufacturing machine, the total amount of hours we spend going to be planning to use it over its life. Or the total amount of units we're going to be manufacturing out of this machine. And what that's going to do, this calculation is going to give us a depreciation rate, the amount of depreciation for one unit one mile, one hour, one item being manufactured. So to use this units of production method, we need, to, we need to know how much work was done for a whole year, one year, the amount of miles driven one year, the amount of units produced in one year, and we would multiply it by this rate we had figured out to get the annual depreciation expense. We debit the depreciation expense, 
and credit the accumulated depreciation. So in our example again, same costs, same salvage value, so the same depreciable cost of 45000 where we divide it by the life, not in years, but the amount of units we expect to make over the life of this asset. And that's going to give us a rate of 45 cents per unit. And here we're told we made 22,000 units during the year. So if you multiply out the two, you multiply out the two, you're going to get your depreciation for that year. Again, the formula is the same starting off, depreciable costs, cost minus salvage value, and divided by the total units over the life of this asset to get the rate. So you have to be given these amount of units made during the life. If you have zero units made, then you have zero depreciation expense. Notice of all the years, this is the highest production. So you're going to have the highest depreciation for that year. Also notice again, the book value in the last year, the cost of the 50000 minus the accumulated depreciation of 45 going to leave us a book value of 5000 the undepreciated costs. The last of the three methods is called declining balance method. And I'll explain why they named this declining balance. What's going to happen is more depreciation is going to be allocated to the earlier years and that's going to leave less in the later years. If you add up all of the years depreciation, the total is going to be the same as the total of the other methods over the total years. Now the reason for allocating more in the first years is that because it's a new asset, there's going to be less maintenance, less repair costs. But as the item gets older, you're going to have more repair costs. So to offset this repair cost, they're going to move more of the depreciation expense in the earlier years and less so in the later years. So think of an automobile, a new automobile, and you drive it off the lot. Right away you have a big amount of, of write-off, right? The value goes down a lot. But as the automobile gets lower, the rate of um, decline in value starts to slow down. Okay? But overall, the total over all the years is still the same. You're just moving more into the earlier and less into the later years. So the formula for the declining balance method is to start off with, um, they, they're trying to calculate this percentage, but this would be the total cost here, and we divide it by the life. And notice that we don't take into account any salvage value in this calculation, at least for now. Here's the life, yeah? So instead of using the cost, you just use the number one to get a depreciation rate. So if you remember, this is the rate they had used for straight line. But because this is uh, a special declining balance method and we want to take more in the earlier years, we're going to double that straight line rate, Yeah, double the 20% in our case, to use 40% rate. And now we're going to take this rate and multiply it not by the 45 depreciable cost, but with the total cost of um, 50000 Now this 50000 is really not the cost. What we're doing here is taking the book value, which is cost minus the salvage value. Sorry, accumulated depreciation. Cost minus accumulated depreciation is the book value. Now for the first year, the um, year we bought the equipment, there is no accumulated depreciation. So the book value is just the cost, which comes out to 50. And here is the depreciation for the first year. Now for the second year, we still use the same rate of 40%, but the book value at the beginning of the second year is the cost of 50 minus the prior year's depreciation, this one year's depreciation, or 30 and that's going to leave us a smaller depreciation expense for the second year. And then the third year we use 40 percent, reducing it, uh, and then the book value at the beginning of the year is even smaller. Okay? And this is what's declining. Declining balance is the book value they're looking at at the beginning of the year. So let's take a look at the formula again. Here's that book value at the beginning of the first year, 2011 and we're multiplying it by that rate we had figured out to get the depreciation for the first year. 
for the second year, same rate, same cost, but the accumulated depreciation here it was zero. Here is now twenty. So the here's a depreciation for the second year. Now for the third year, twenty thirteen, same rate, same cost. What's our accumulated depreciation at the end of the at the beginning of the third year? Well, it's the amount of depreciation for the prior years, or uh, this looks like 32. So we have a book value of 18,000 times the 40% equals whatever depreciation. I can't do it in my head for the second year. But notice that the depreciation gets smaller and smaller because the book value, the book value is declining. Yeah, this is the double. This is the declining balance. The book value is declining, and we're taking double. Remember, the street line rate was 20%. We're taking double the amount here, 40%. Let me show you another way of uh, calculating this uh, declining balance method. You would take the cost, and what you would subtract out is the accumulated depreciation at the beginning of the year. And of course, the beginning of the first year, this would be zero. This is book value and we divide that by the life in years for the asset. And the double declining balance method would double this amount here. Okay, So this is a, a more general formula. Instead of uh, dividing by the five-year life and, more, and taking double, and the next year dividing by the five-year life and taking double, what they do is combine these two numbers together taking double and dividing by 5, well this is the same thing as the 40 percent. And this again is the book value. Okay, So the beginning um, book value for the year, beginning book value for the year times the rate here, that's 40 percent, will give you your depreciation for that year. Every year this goes down, so every year this will go down. So here's a schedule of depreciation. The book value at the beginning of the year times 40% gives us our depreciation for the first year, debit depreciation expense, credit accumulated depreciation. And here's the book value at the end of the first year, which is the book value at the beginning of the second year. So we multiply this by 40% to get 12,000 debit credit. And the book value at the end of the second year is 18. 18 times 40% gives a depreciation for the next year, increasing the uh, accumulated depreciation, decreasing the book value. Remember, we all start off with this cost here, right? Cost, sorry, cost minus accumulated depreciation equals book value. Cost minus accumulated depreciation equals book value. Your cost doesn't change minus the increasing accumulated depreciation equals a decreasing book value. I think I'm one slide ahead. So if you keep on following the pattern here in the last fifth year, what's going to happen in calculating this depreciation? The book value is going to go below that salvage value we had uh, estimated at the very beginning. But remember, each year we didn't take into account the salvage value until now here in the last year because this book value cannot go below 5000 so what we got to do our textbook calls force a lot of accountants call plug a number here where the total depreciation is only going to be 45000 so if you look at this number and you compare it to the maximum of 45 that's the cost of 50 minus the salvage value of 5 we're going to plug in here uh, the difference between these two uh, to get this number, which comes out to uh, 1480. Again, the difference between these two. We know this. Here's what we estimate to be over the whole life, and that's equal this amount. So now, when we take the cost minus that accumulated depreciation, here it leaves us a book value equal to the salvage value. Again, you cannot bring the book value below the salvage value. So graphically, in comparing, plotting out the depreciation for for a straight line, it, it's the same amount for every full year. 
and the units of production method will jump up and down depending upon no work done or lots of work done versus the declining balance method where it starts off high and starts to go to very small amounts but if you add up all of this it should equal all of this amount it should equal all of this amount now when you calculate depreciation like we've done here you're doing it for financial statements remember balance sheet income statement cash flow statement but taxes have different rules taxes have different depreciation calculations called modified accelerated cost recovery and it's more like that double declining balance method we had learned a slight variation of that so if you want to learn this method here you gotta take a tax class in fact here at leeward we teach this uh, MACR's makers depreciation not in the first tax class but our second tax class Now, if you buy your de uh, depreciable asset not at the beginning of the year, for the first year of usage, you're going to be only for part of the year. So in our example where we had a depreciation for a full uh, year coming out, let's say, to 7000 cost of uh, 75 minus depreciation uh, salvage value of 5 leaving us 70000 dividing it by a life of 10 will give us a depreciation of seven thousand dollars for one full year but here if you bought it on July 30th and your year end is December 31st that means you've held it only for six months for the first year so we gotta take half a year's worth six twelfths of a full year depreciation so this asset that lasts uh, ten years really will overlap eleven years uh, for a company yeah half year in the first year a half year in the last year and then um, uh, nine whole years in between that now depreciation is just an estimated calculation where we estimate the life and we estimate the um, salvage value so as time goes on maybe these estimates are going to change now you don't go back and recalculate old past years depreciations it's from the time you think that you're going to change your life or salvage value from that point forward you're going to change the depreciation uh, amounts so at the year you estimate that the life is going to change you calculate that year's book value before recording any depreciation you subtract out any change to the salvage value and you divide it by the remaining uh, years you think you're going to be using that asset all of this is for the straight line method so here it shows um, let me go back here it shows that here's the original cost and we had estimated to use a 10-year life so for the past three years we've been taking 3,000 or a total of 9,000 depreciation leaving a book value of 21 but we don't estimate the life to be seven more years but we change it down to only five more so we take this remaining cost minusing out any salvage value looks like it's zero and here's now our new depreciation for the remaining five years debit depreciation credit accumulated depreciation and not three thousand like we had done in the past years so on our balance sheet remember balance sheet has assets and we have already seen and liabilities and stockholders equity and we've already seen current assets in the past chapter uh, current assets so here's the property and plant and equipment the long-term assets we usually always start off with land and building if you have that type of asset then the smaller assets equipment furniture improvements I would think would, should be up here the difference between land improvements and a building is that improvements are more things like walls parking lots lighting uh, sprinkler systems yeah, things that are not part of the building but eventually will wear away so here's the total of the original cost and then here's how much we've used up of that cost now in reality what you should have is not one big accumulated depreciation for all these assets but one accumulated depreciation for your building one for machinery and equipment one for furniture and equipment so you can get the book value for each of these 
here we get the book value for everything. Again, original costs minus how much we used up of that cost and the remaining undepreciated or book value. Here they call it net assets. Here's some additional terminology. Whenever we have costs, costs, if you deduct it right away, that's called an expense. Another word for expense is called revenue expenditure because you match up revenue and expenses on the income statement. But if the cost is treated as an asset, we call that a capital expenditure. Okay, it shows up as an asset on the balance sheet. Yeah, expenses are on the income statement. But eventually, assets are turned into expenses. Here, you're just postponing or deferring the expenses when it's an asset. So let's say that later on you have some additional costs you incur to fix up your assets. If it's an ordinary, regular maintenance, we treat it as a revenue expenditure or really an expense, like I mentioned in the previous screen. Revenue expenditure means expense. But if that cost is a major cost that makes the asset better, more productive, or extends the life of the asset, we treat that as an asset cost or capital expenditure, debiting asset. So an example would be, let's say that I repaint my automobile. Well, it doesn't really extend the normal life of the asset, right? It's still the same thing. I don't get any more mileage out of it. So that's a, an expense. But if I had to overhaul the um, engine, that may make it a better asset, extending the life of the whole automobile. Or well, maybe an easier thing to identify is a repainting of a building that could cost, if it's a big building, hundreds of thousands of dollars, but that's an expense. If you re-roof the building, you may have to take off the cost of the old roof and replace it with a new cost that's going to extend the life of the whole building. Okay, So that would be a, a betterment treated as an asset. So you see the difference between the two? Both are additional costs, but one is reoccurring regular and one is going to extend the life or make the asset more productive. Okay, Expense costs, asset costs. So let's get rid of our assets. We're going to dispose of it. So let me show you a formula. How about a black screen here? So here is the cost of our asset and we keep track, of, let's call it equipment to giving you an example. And here is the accumulated depreciation of that asset, how much we've used up so far. And if you take the difference between the two, the original cost and how much you've used up, what do we call that difference? What's BV? Yeah, book value. And then if your cost is fully depreciated, yeah, let's say 100,000, 100,000, that means your book value is zero. So it must be a really old asset by now and not worth anything. So if you just throw it away, you have to get rid of this asset. We know equipment is recorded with debits. So to get rid of it, you're going to credit the equipment account. And you have to get rid of the related accumulated depreciation that was initially recorded with credits. Remember contra asset increase with credits. So to get rid of it, just the opposite, you debit. Now let's say that you actually had some value through this equipment, so you're going to sell it. Okay, so let's have a sales price up here. So that means you're going to collect money. Money is cash. You're collecting cash. So are you going to debit cash or credit cash? Well, money coming in is an asset. Assets are debited. And hopefully it's a large amount. Hopefully it's bigger than this remaining cost down here. So if you take that sales price and minus out the leftover costs, the difference is either going to be a gain if the cash you collect is bigger than this book value, or it's going to be a loss where the book value is bigger than this uh, cash or sales price. Gains are like revenue. And now how do you record revenue? with debits or credits? Come on, you know that, right? Losses are like expenses and expenses are recorded with debits. 
debits. Sorry, my screen is disappearing here. So to journalize the disposition of an asset, here you're getting rid of the asset credit. You're getting rid of the related contra asset debit. Here's money coming in, if any, debiting cash. And if the amount of cash you get is bigger than the book value, recall the revenue credit. Or book value bigger than the sales price, recall the loss, like an expense debit. And in this one big journal entry, debit and credits, total dollar debits got to equal total dollar credits. Otherwise, you haven't accounted for everything. Here, your sales price. Sorry. If your sales price is equal to the book value, then no gain or loss, no crediting revenue, no debiting expense. But if the sales price is bigger than the book value, you're going to have a gain. Gains are recorded with credits, just like revenue. Or here where you have a loss, sales price smaller than book value, you're going to have an expense being debited. Example, we have on September 30th, Evan Company sells a machine that originally cost 100000 and here's your sales price, 60000 cash. You, you know you're going to collect this money. The machine was placed in service back on January 1st, 2008. I believe the original number was 2009, but that's not going to come out to the numbers on the next screen, so I changed it to 8. So we've held it for 2008, 2009, 2010, and now we're selling it in 2011. But before you sell it, you got to record depreciation all the way up to the date you sell it. So here's that cost. Here's the salvage value. So 80,000 depreciable costs divided by the 10 year life will give us 8,000 for one whole year's worth of depreciation. But in 2011, we've held it only for nine months before we sold it, or nine twelfths of a full year's worth of depreciation is 6,000. Debiting depreciation expense and crediting the contra asset accumulated depreciation. So now, in our accumulated depreciation account, we have three years and nine months worth of depreciation. Three years and nine months worth of depreciation is 30000 Here's the original cost. Remember, cost minus accumulated depreciation equals the remaining book value. And if we get more than this when we sell it, the difference would be a gain. But we got only 60000 So that difference of 10000 is a loss. Again, recorded with a debit. So let's take a look at the journal entry. Well, here's that gain or loss formula here to get that loss. Yeah? Journal entry. You get rid of the asset for the full cost, debiting, uh, crediting the asset. You get rid of the related contra asset. Remember, this is uh, three years and nine months worth of depreciation. Debiting the accumulated depreciation. And here's our favorite account being debited, cash for the sales price. To equalize the debits and credits, we had calculated we're missing some debits, or here a loss. Loss is like an expense. Expenses are recorded with debits. And if the sales price were bigger than the book value, we would have to have more credits to balance, and that would be a gain, if any. So we had talked about natural resources, so the calculation for not depreciation but depletion is similar to the uh, units of production method where we take the original cost and minus out the salvage value and divide it by the total amount we expect to extract from that natural resource over its lifetime to give us the depletion for one unit. And here's the amount of units we had uh, extracted or sold during the period to get our depletion expense depletion. Intangible uses the straight line method to calculate. So here's some example of intangible assets. Assets that a company can own but cannot physically touch. A common one in Hawaii would be a leasehold interest, sometimes treated more like real estate than uh, intangible. So we have a we have a patent that by legally uh, it would be lasting 20 years but probably it will be worth less than that over its lifetime so we are going to, we're going to amortize it over 10 years so if you divide uh, the cost by the life here is our amortization expense again the calculation is like straight line cost divided by life 
yeah, 1,000 expense, 1,000 accumulated amortization, the contra asset. Examples of intangible assets. Typically, you would buy these. You really wouldn't develop it yourself. Now, of all the intangible assets, goodwill is the strange one. Typically, you get it when you buy a whole company, and you have to remember allocate the cost among all the identifiable assets, building equipment, and the ones you cannot identify if you have leftover costs will be assigned to an asset called goodwill. That's not really amortized like the other assets. But what you have to do is determine whether or not this invisible, hard to identify asset called goodwill is still there. And if it's not there, you have to reduce the asset. Here it's called an impairment. And we leave that for an advanced accounting class. At the end of every chapter, we have some ratios, and here's our asset turnover ratio, where we take the net sales for the whole year and divide it by the average assets we own during the year. The average meaning taking the beginning and averaging it with the ending of the year. And what you want is the ratio here to be high. That means you get lots of revenue for the amount of assets you own. You want your sales to be high. That's so logical, right? But do you want your assets to be big or small? You want your really assets to be small to generate this big sales. So in the case of, let's say, the biggest asset you may own is a building. Well, maybe it ain't worth it to own a building. Maybe it's better to rent it so it doesn't show up as an asset on your um, balance sheet. And you get a bigger turnover ratio. You get lots of sales for the amount of assets you do own. Now, if you take a look at an airlines, don't they have lots of assets? Don't you see those aircraft with their name printed on it? Well, for most of those airlines, they don't own those airplanes. They probably rent it or lease it. And we don't get into lease accounting, at least very briefly, until a couple of chapters from now. Okay, so again, a ratio uh, calculation at the end of every chapter. And here's ours for chapter 8, the total asset turnover ratio. So that's the end of our chapter 8. Get working on your learn smart questions and your chapter 8 homework. Okay, I'll see you later.